Do you get pain when walking? Or are you concerned about your balance and stability? In this video, I'll describe three common mistakes that may be causing your pain and balance problems. Plus, I'll give you tips to avoid them so you can have longer pain-free walks and better balance. Ready to get started? Let's go. When we move, we move in three primary planes, forwards, backwards, side to side, and rotational. And each one of the three mistakes that I'll describe focuses primarily on one of these planes of movement. And the first one is the side to side plane. And that's because this problem is the one that's most likely to cause falls. When people are walking, sometimes they'll cross their leg too far across midline. And what that does, is it makes you more likely to get your feet tangled up so that you trip and fall over your own feet. Now this may happen for a variety of reasons. It may be due to weakness in the hip muscles of your stance leg, which causes you to place your foot across midline, or it may be due to stiffness of the inner thigh muscles on your swing leg. But either way, if you're crossing your feet across midline, you're more likely to get your feet tangled up. It can also lead to outer hip pain because the muscles and tendons get stretched over the outside of your hip and can become painful. And so the best tip to relieve this problem is just to focus on keeping your feet hips width apart when you're walking. You may even want to think about pressing outwards just slightly sort of like an ice skater or a cross country skier. And what that does is it activates your glute muscles, your gluteus medius and your gluteus minimus when you're stepping just slightly to the side. And by activating those muscles, you make yourself less likely to drop your hip out to the side, causing you to cross your leg across midline and overstretch the muscles on the outside of the hip. So that's the first mistake is in the side to side plane. Now the second mistake is in the rotational or twisting plane, and that's excessive internal rotation of your hip or pronation of your foot. This problem affects all of the joints in your leg. Your hip internally rotates. It causes a valgus or inward force at your knee, which puts stress on the ligaments on the inside of the knee. It also causes a relative twisting force at your knee. Even though your femur and tibia are both internally rotating, the femur is internally rotating more than the tibia. So it causes a relative external rotation of the tibia on the femur. It also causes a twisting at the ankle, which can cause problems like tarsal tunnel syndrome, and it causes a flattening of the foot, which can contribute to plantar fasciitis or other types of foot pain. And so a tip to avoid this problem is to think about hitting more on the outer side of your foot as your foot hits the ground. So rather than hitting with your foot flat, think about hitting slightly more on the outer side of the foot and then squeezing or engaging your glute muscles at the same time that you make contact. This will help keep your knee from twisting inwards. And additionally, you want to think about gripping the ground with your toes. So kind of scrunching your foot and doming your arch. And this will give you a solid base to stand on to prevent flattening of your foot. Now I know that's a lot to process, but think about it one step at a time. Hitting more on the outside part of your foot, doming your arch or squeezing the ground with your toes, and then engaging your glute muscles so that you balance your body over top of your foot. Then once you have a nice, solid, stable pillar, then take a step with your next foot and hit on the outside part of the foot, dome the arch, engage your glute muscles, and then step again. To see that from more of a side view, you're going to hit on the outside part of the foot, dome your arch, engage your glutes, get balance over that leg, and then take a step. Hit on the outside part of the foot, Dome the arch to get a solid base, engage the glutes to balance over the leg, and then take a step. And then you can practice that step by step as an exercise and eventually start to incorporate it into your walking. 
Now the third mistake that I'll mention is in the front to back plate. And this one is probably the most controversial, and that mistake is heel striking. Many people have actually been told that you want to walk heel to toe when you're walking. Either they've heard it just in common everyday life, or they've even been told that by a doctor or a physical therapist. But when you heel strike, that puts a lot of impact right on the heel, which can create problems like plantar fasciitis or heel spurs. Additionally, because you can't absorb shock well with just your heel, it transmits more force up your chain, which can be absorbed then in your knee joint or your hip joint, or even all the way up to the lower back. Conversely, if you hit with your whole foot at the same time, you've got a nice arch in your foot that is designed to help absorb shock. And so rather than hitting with your heel first and going heel to toe, try to hit with your whole foot at the same time. Now this plays in nicely to the last tip that we talked about, because if you're hitting more on the outside of your foot with your arch domed, you're hitting more naturally on your arch to help absorb shock. And so while these three tips do seem to be a lot to manage all at one time, they actually play well nicely into one another. Now what about exercises to help improve your walking? Well, I've got a whole playlist of different tips and exercises to help improve walking, which I'll link to at the end of this video. But before you go watch that, one thing that you should know is that exercises alone will not help improve your walking. And that's because walking is a complex task where you have to fire different muscle groups at the proper timing, in the proper sequencing, in the proper amounts in order to walk normally. And if your brain had to think about all of that at the same time, then you wouldn't be able to do anything else. But fortunately, our brain puts together programs, motor programs, which are kind of like computer programs, containing thousands of lines of code. But all your brain has to do is say, run the walking program, and your body automatically knows what to do. But if you get an error in one of those lines of code, or something stops working properly, then you have to volitionally think about recoding that motor program by thinking about the problem and thinking about the way you walk until it becomes a new habit. Now research shows it takes on an average of 66 days to form a new habit, but that may range from as little as two weeks to as much as two years. So you do have to think about it when you're walking for quite a long period of time before it becomes a habit. But think about it. If you're exercising 15 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day or even an hour a day if you're really dedicated, that pales in comparison to the other 23 hours a day. And so the best exercise that you can do to improve your walking is actually walking with intention, paying attention to hitting with your feet hips width apart, hitting on the outside of the foot, hitting with your arch domed, engaging your glutes, as you load weight over top of your leg, hitting more with a whole foot rather than hitting with a heel strike, pushing off of your back foot rather than pulling forwards with your front foot. Now, you may think that sounds overwhelming, and you would be right. You can't focus on all of those things at one time. But just think about the one problem that bothers you the most. Is it number one, crossing midline like that? Comment one below. Is it number two, pronating or internally rotating too much? Comment two below. Or is it number three, heel striking and causing too much impact force to go up through your chain? Comment three below. And just focus on the one problem that's the biggest one for you. And then once you get that into your walking program, then focus on the next biggest problem and then the next biggest problem. Again, it will take you some time to learn these things, but it's worth it in the end to help you have less pain when walking and better balance and stability. Then once you've gotten those things into place, then the exercises are icing on the cake. And you can check out some exercises to help you with your walking right over here in the playlist. But before you go, if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.